All right, so let's resolve these force vectors now. Now, what do I mean by resolving the force vector diagram? So let's say you've got, um, it doesn't matter what it is, let's say you've got this ball here on a ramp. So you'll remember we were talking about a ball on a ramp. Uh, if you've got a ball on a ramp, now it looks like that ball is going to fall down the ramp, right? But it's being acted on by three different forces. Now, if you knew what the magnitude and direction of those forces were. In other words, if you knew what the vectors were for the, the weight and you knew the vector for the normal contact force and you knew the vector for the friction, you can add those three vectors together and you'd get what's called the resultant. Uh, now, the resultant is going to tell you how your ball is actually moving, what's actually happening. Um, so, looking at this example, we have a ball, a thing, whatever, I don't care what it is, but it's being acted on by three forces. And those three forces can be written as these three vectors. Um, now you can look at those. Now, essentially, if I want to know what direction this ball is traveling in, I just need to figure out uh, what it is, what happens when I add those three vectors together. So let's do that now. So if I take those three vectors and add them together, I'll get 8i plus 4j. So that means that our ball is traveling in the direction 8i plus 4j. That's, e, that's essentially what this whole business is about. Now, if I want to know the magnitude, I'm just finding the um, magnitude of our resultant ve uh, force vector. So in this case, it's 4 root 5 newtons which is 8.94 newtons. Where did this word newtons come from? Newtons is a measure of force. And if I know my magnitude, I'm actually figuring out how much force is being applied in that direction. So I have a direction, 8i plus 4j. Um, and now I know that the, uh, the force being applied in that direction is 8.94 newtons. I can also find the angle that the ball is traveling with in regards to the vertical. And you've already done all of this. You know about Pythagoras' theorem. We know the vector is 8i, 4j. So we can find an angle of 26.6. So that means that this ball is traveling with 8.94 newtons of force in an angle 26.6 degrees from the horizontal. OK, um, so those are pretty straightforward ideas. This next one might take just a little bit of work. So let's say our ball stops. So by changing one of the forces, the resultant is zero, means the ball stops. If the resultant is zero, the ball's not moving. So all I now need to do is say, okay, if the resultant is zero and F1 is the thing that changed, I can say that negative F1 equals F2 plus F3. Um, which means that positive F1 is negative F2 minus F3. Okay, so following along so far. Now, if I sub in F2 and F3, I'll get negative 4i minus 9j. Now, let's remind ourselves of what F1 was initially. F1 was 4i minus 5j. So uh, 4i, here we are. 4 across and negative 5 down. Now it's changed to give us a result of 0. It's changed to negative 4i, negative 9i. So it's changed its direction in the i component and it's changed its, or it's increased its uh, j component. So if you want a ball, a thing to stop moving, you just need the result to equal 0. That's sort of the, the takeaway from that question. So an interesting result from this is called the triangle of forces. And if I represent my three, just my new, my new F1, my F2 and my F3, if they add up to equal zero, you know that addition gives you the distance from tip to, from tip to tail. Um, now, if they add up to zero, then the distance from tip to tail from the first one to the last one must also be zero, which means that we can put them into a triangle. Um, so now that we've got them in a triangle, 
we can use a couple of interesting mathematical formulas to deal with, with uh, force vectors. So as long as something has a result of zero, that is, as long as it's standing still, we can put it into a triangle, A, B, C, A, B, C, and we can apply two rules which you've, you haven't used before called the sine and cosine rules. Now, the sine and cosine rules are as follows. The sine rule says that A over sine of a, so you'll see the angle and the, the angle and the side of the same letter opposite each other. The angle and the side of the same letter opposite each other. This is the sine rule. So this divided by sine of this equals this divided by sine of this, which equals this divided by sine of this. The cosine rule is a little more complicated. A squared, so this length, is equal to B squared plus C squared. So it's kind of like Pythagoras theorem so far, minus two times B C cosine of A, cosine of the same angle or the opposite angle to the side that you're trying to find. So these two rules can be very, very useful in terms of resolving these, these um, force diagrams. A quick example, three forces A, B, C act on an object such that the resultant force is zero. The force A acts at an angle of 150 degrees to the force B. They both have a magnitude of 20 newtons. So, determine the magnitude of C. Okay, what have we got? We've got a vector A and a vector B that have 150 degrees between them. And we've talked about the fact that if, if two vectors have 150 degrees between them, put them tip to tip, or sorry, tail to tail, and find that angle. But of course, if you want to add vectors, which is what we want to do, putting them tip to tip is a terrible, or tail to tail is a terrible idea. What you have to do is put them tip to tail. So moving that B from there to there allows us to draw in this. Now, we know that that angle is now 30 degrees, and we know it's 30 degrees because of our U rule when it comes to geometry. So this is obviously parallel to this because they're the same vector. Uh, so that's going to be 30 degrees. And then this C is just from tip to tail here. So now we've created our, our thing. We also know that um, A and B have magnitudes of 20 newtons. 20, 20. So if we want to determine the magnitude of C, if we've got this, this, and this, we won't be able to use the sine rule, but we can use the cosine rule. So it's as simple as putting all of your numbers into your cosine rule and getting an answer of 10.35 newtons. Be careful, make sure you put it into your calculator because sometimes you'll think you're gonna get the answer and you don't get that right. Now, if you wanna find the angle that C makes with B, you also need to be careful here because the angle that C makes with B is not that. The angle that C makes with B is more like uh, that. Okay, so I've moved it there so it's they're tail to tail. Okay, and you can see that that's happening there. Now, you can essentially do a little bit of geometry here to figure that one out. Because you know that this is an isosceles triangle, if that's 30, 30 degrees, that means that's 75 degrees. If I shift that up and find that angle, I've got another U rule situation, and I can say it's 105 degrees. Okay, um, I've covered a lot there in a short amount of time. So make sure that you... If you've got this one note in front of you, make sure that you dive in and take all of those notes because they're going to be very, very important in order to get this stuff.